Hey there, Dev Bootcamp. My name is Ariana Savant, but I go by Ari. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, but I go to school in Fairfield, Connecticut, where I'm studying math. I'm also majoring in Spanish, which is why I spent this past semester down in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The full immersion did wonders for my language skills. I learned more last semester than I did in eight previous years of study combined. I was so enthused by my experience there that I plan to continue my studies of the Spanish language next semester, this time in Sevilla, Spain, and I'm crossing my fingers that my next immersion experience will be back in the good old U.S. of A. in San Francisco, California, learning Ruby and a few other languages from all of you at Dev Bootcamp. So that's a little about me, but I'd like to move right into the teaching portion of my video because I'm very excited about it. Today, I hope to shed a little light on something called Galileo's Paradox. It's one of my favorite concepts in math because when I first learned it, it completely blew my mind. So, to begin, we need to start with something called sets. Mathematicians use the word set as a fancy way to mean a group. They use the word group for something else, so let's not get into that. So you can have a set of numbers, a set of flowers, a set of balloons, a set of anything. Sets are denoted using curly brackets like this. Mathematicians use the word cardinality to express the number of elements in a given set. So our first set has a cardinality of 6, our set of flowers has a cardinality of 3, and our set of balloons has a cardinality of 4 because there are 4 balloons. But let's consider some other sets that you're probably already familiar with. Consider, for example, the set of the integers. The integers are the counting numbers, the ones you'd find on a number line, including the negative ones. Because the set is considered so often, we denote the entire set using a bold-faced Z, like this. So now we want to know, what is the cardinality of the integers? Here we encounter a problem. Because the integers are what we call an infinite set, we can't just count each integer. After all, that's why we use them for counting, because they never run out. But then, how do we start to find the cardinality of an infinite set of numbers? Moreover, what if we were to consider other infinite sets? For example, the even numbers. Those would look like the integers on the number line above, except skipping over all the odd numbers. This would also be an infinite set, because we can see that it will extend in both the positive and negative directions forever, just like the integers do. But hold on a second. Both of these sets, the integers and the evens, are infinite sets. We just agreed. But do we really think that there are just as many integers as there are even numbers? Won't there always be two whole numbers for every even number? Wouldn't the set of evens plus, or union, the set of odds equal the set of integers? Yep, it would. That's a true relationship. But Galileo's paradox says that even though that relationship holds true, the evens, in and of themselves, still have the same cardinality as the integers. In other words, in this case, the part equals the whole. Let's take a look and see why. Let's consider two new finite sets. We have a set of houses and a set of people. We want to find out if these two sets have the same cardinality. We can go about this two ways. The first is to do what we've been doing and simply count them. Three houses, three people. But there's also another way to show this. If we pair each person to each house and we have no remaining people or houses in either set, then it's safe to assume that our two sets, again, are of the same cardinality, the same size. Let's try to use this pairing method to see whether or not our two infinite sets in fact have the same cardinality. First, we need to try to begin writing down our different sets in a list so that we can consider them apart from their number lines. Let's craft our list so that we immediately pair each positive value with its negative counterpart, and we'll do the same for our even set. Now let's try our second method from the houses and the people example and see if we can pair up our elements. And it turns out we can. We can continue pairing elements in this way forever and ever, and no set will ever run out of elements to pair with the other set. As an aside, this method is called establishing a bijection between the two sets. A bijection is the mathematical term for this pairing method. Therefore, in the same way that we showed that the set of houses and the set of people had the same size, we just demonstrated that, despite our intuition, there are as many even numbers as there are whole numbers, the evens and the odds combined. Let me summarize what we just did. We had two independent sets, the integers and the even numbers. We know that these are both infinite sets, so they must have the same size, and therefore the same cardinality. But when we look at the relationship between these two sets, namely that the evens are contained within the integers, our intuition tells us that the evens must be smaller than the integers. But this is Galileo's paradox, because we demonstrated by our pairing method that there exists a unique integer value for each even value, and vice versa. 
So, by the same logic that we use with the people in the houses, we know that the integers and the evens, evens in fact share the same cardinality. So congratulations! I hope you find Galileo's paradox as fascinating as I do. Thank you for taking the time to consider my application, and I hope you have a great day.